Hey YouTube, hey subscribers, thanks for tuning in. In this video, let's address something that I've seen narcissists do upon meeting a new target. And that is that they try to possess that target. Now all narcissists won't attempt to possess you. I find that they do one of really three things, but really one of two things. They either try to destroy you right away, they ignore you because they already have a target that they're working on and that target is you know taking up the bulk of their time and energy or they try to possess you now when I use the term possess I mean it in the sense of owning something like you possess a vehicle you possess a home a possession something that you own not in the spiritual sense of <laughs> being possessed, although it can be argued that narcissists do possess people in a way, but we won't go down that rabbit hole um, maybe another time. But when narcissists meet you, they try to possess you immediately. They try to entangle you in their web immediately, and it tends to be um, too much too soon. So this person, upon meeting you, immediately tries to mother all over you. They try to father all over you. They try to act as a good brother or a good sister or a best friend. Or sometimes they'll put on this hat of mentor um, and offer you all of this coaching and counseling that you actually didn't ask for. And nothing that you said or done has indicated that you need this high touch, this super high level of attention but the narcissist takes it upon themselves to kind of take you under their wing. Now, at first, it's going to seem great. You know, um, I talk about business a lot, but I try to, you know, expand it out to other areas of life. So maybe you just started a new job, or maybe you just moved into a new neighborhood. Maybe you just joined a new church. Maybe you just joined a new social organization of some kind. Either way, you're new in a group and a person immediately latches on to you. And at first you might feel thankful, oh my goodness, thank goodness I have this person. They're helping show me the ropes. You know, they've been, they're being very supportive and very, um, you know, um, making themselves available to help me out. And at first you might actually really appreciate it because it's nice to have that person in a new environment. If you're dealing with a normal, healthy person, they won't have any like expectations attached to the help. So if you're dealing with a real mentor, a real coach, someone who really is just trying to take you under their wing and help you out, they're not in turn going to attach some sort of unrealistic expectations to that help. So here's what I mean by that. You come in, they swoop you under their wing, they get you all entangled, they help you. They actually do offer real legit help, but then Here's how you know you're dealing with a narcissist. So something happens, they make you an offer that you have to decline. So let's say they, you know, after a week and a half of knowing you, they're like, hey, you know, we're going out on the boat this Saturday, do you wanna come? And you already had plans, or maybe you just don't wanna go, or whatever the case may be. So you say, oh, thank you so much for the invite, but you know, I, I'll have to pass. And then after you decline that invite, they completely turn on you. There's a shift in their behavior, in their mood, in their attitude, and you can detect it. It's very detectable, okay? So you being new and not really knowing this person are gonna be like, huh, that's kinda weird. They seem kinda distant now. But you kinda go on with your life or whatever. You're still polite and friendly. And like all narcissists do, they're gonna circle back again. Because remember, they're, they've been hurt now. They've known you a week and a half. They've extended all this help that you didn't ask for. And then when they invite you to something, which is your form of repayment, that is your payback. So I've done all this for you, so now I'm gonna ask you to do something for me. And when you decline, in their eyes, you've um, slighted them. You've cheated them out of something, okay? But they're gonna try again. They're gonna circle, they're gonna sulk for a few days or whatever, and then they're gonna circle back and they're gonna try again. Okay, now if you decline the second time, that's when they're gonna flip on you and you're gonna see that you've got a narcissist. If you're dealing with a normal person and they say, hey, do you wanna go out on the boat this Saturday? And you're like, oh no, I already had plans or whatever. They'll say, okay, cool, well, we'll see you next week. It's no big deal to them. They don't feel slighted because the help that they were extending to you 
did not come with a um, a price tag on it. It's just a function of who they are. It's a function of their role or who they are or just what they like to do or maybe someone did that for them so they like to do it for others. But if you decline it, they probably wouldn't even extend an invitation to you that soon knowing that you're new to the group, you're trying to get comfortable, get to know folks. And I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. It happens all the time with normal people inviting people they just met to go places and it's totally normal. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm saying it becomes abnormal when this person gets angry when you assert a boundary or when you just simply decline an invitation because you didn't know that that invitation was now the beginning of your repayment plan, okay? All of that stuff they gave you in the beginning was a loan. Um, <laughs> that was not a gift, it was a loan. Now let's look at another angle of this. So sometimes you'll say yes. So they help you out, they've known you a week and a half, then they invite you out to the boat on Saturday and you say yes. You go, they're a great host. You know, they're introducing you to people. You know, here's the food, here's the drinks, have a good time. So you go, you have a great time and you're glad that you went, right? What you don't realize you've done is now you've created an even deeper deficit that's gonna to have to be filled because now the narcissist goes, oh, this is, this is a live one. This one is compliant. This one, this one's agreeable. So let's see what else he or she will agree to. So first it starts off with, will you come out to the boat on Saturday? Then it becomes, you know, uh, do you wanna drive out of town for the weekend, spend the weekend somewhere, whatever, with me and my friends or whatever. Then that turns into, will you come over and help me paint? It, it always morphs, it continually morphs into more and more giving on your end. That's the other thing you have to watch. If it's a legit, healthy friendship developing, there's gonna be constant reciprocation, give and take, give and take, back and forth. No one's gonna feel like they're kind of doing too much. But you, now that you're entangled in the web, you, you agree to that boat ride, they're gonna ask you to do something else because here's what the problem, here's another part of the problem. This person has actually run off all of the friends that they probably ever had. So when they meet someone who actually agrees to do things with them, they get excited because they finally have someone else, a new target to feed them fresh, fresh supply. So you agree to the boat. Maybe you'll agree to go shopping. Then let's agree to brunch. Before you know it, you start to feel like you are this person's new best friend. And that's a problem because best friendships really take some time to form. I know a lot of people have met and they clicked instantly and they've been friends ever since. And that is beautiful and that's awesome. But most natural friendships occur kind of slowly over time. It's not instant. It's not all this attention and activity and involvement so soon. It's too soon. It's, way, it's just like if it was a dating relationship and, and too much happens too soon. Something's off with that. Human beings, ha you have to earn each other's trust and respect. You offer a little bit of trust and respect on the front end, but overall, friendships are built over time. They take foundation blocks. They're not built in a week and a half, two weeks. So after two weeks, you find yourself going to all these different places with this person. Usually their idea, I would say 90% of the time it's their idea. And over time, you'll just start to find yourself giving and giving and giving of yourself more and more and more to this specific person. And they're not returning it. And they're certainly not being the person they were when you first met them, offering all this help, let me sweep you under my wing, da 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 da. It's all about just kind of entangling you and setting up a sense of guilt and obligation with you. And so um, this one is a hard one to navigate because there are good people out there who do the exact same thing. So it is tough to know, is this person legitimately gen um, genuine and generous with me because that's who they are? Or is this a narcissist that's in the process of trying to entangle me? So how, do, how would you know? Well, my advice, the way that I'm able to see it is a person just latches on to me too fast. So let's just use the job example. 
uh, I'll start a new job. And you know, I meet people, you know, you're meeting your new coworkers and things like that. But there'll be that one person who is always trying to find you in a crowd, then they find you. And then once they found you, they're with you and they do not leave your side. They're with you the whole entire time. They always kind of have eyes on you. Um, if you drive somewhere, they want to ride with you or they want you to ride with them. Um, you know, they, uh, they start checking in on you daily. It's almost like, it's like a friendship that has progressed five or six years into the future on day two. Um, they start to talk and tell you way too much about themselves very early on, way too much. Um, and certainly things that you didn't ask, they just start to volunteer all this information because they're trying to catch you up <laughs> to five or six years down the road. So they just start volunteering all this information. They just, they latch on to you. Um, they, it's ironic because they latch on to you, but then they make, they try to make you their puppy. <laughs> So at first they're the puppy and then it morphs somehow and then they end up holding the leash, right? So my best piece of advice to you guys for this one is to just always remain present. Try not to get swept up in the newness and the freshness and the moment of things. Enjoy the moment, have fun in the moment, but remain present in your mind in terms of pay attention, especially if you know that you've been a person who has been a target of narcissists continually in your life, they're gonna keep targeting you. And I, I think I'm actually gonna do a video um, called like what, why you're a narcissist target or what makes the narcissist target you or whatever, I'll title it something like that. But you still have those traits and qualities that attract these people. And so the first thing you have to do is acknowledge that you have those traits and qualities that attract these people. And then you have to stay on alert for them because they're always on alert for you. They're always looking for you, but you're not always looking for them. So I want you all to start remaining present and remaining aware of the people who are looking for you and the behaviors that they tend to engage in, engage in right away. Um, it's very, it can be very smothering. It can be a smothering feeling. But again, when you're new in an environment and you don't know anyone, it can feel good at first to have someone like, okay, this person has my back, they wanna help me, but you must remain alert and pay attention to, is there anything attached to this help? Is this person gonna now um, you know, start asking me to do little things that eventually build up to bigger things, right? So let's say um, you know, a new person starts at my job and um, there was a party this weekend that you know, had been planned for months and they're new and all the coworkers are going and they don't know about it. Well, of course we're gonna invite that person. We would hate for this new person to come into the fold and then find out over the weekend there was this huge party that everyone went to and they weren't invited. You know, that, how would that make a person feel? So of course we're gonna invite you to that. But, you know, we're not then gonna be like, you know, so, like, ugh, it's so hard to explain. like. It's hard to explain the differentiate between normal behaviors and narcissistic behaviors. Yes, you loop people into the fold, you invite them, you include them, you don't exclude them because you're new. But the narcissist, there's something attached to every action that they do. So the narcissist invites you out to the party or, or invites you out to the boat. At the party, the narcissist is gonna follow you around all night. They're gonna pretend that they're your ambassador. They're introducing you to everyone. But then after the party, it continues, you know, um, you know, could take, will you take me home or, you know, will you stay two hours later than you want to stay and talk to me? Like there's always something extra attached to the action. So I hope this helps uh, clarify and understand how a narcissist gently and sometimes not so gently tries to entangle you up and, and, and get you involved in their life and set up an obligation of some kind so you'll have to pay it back indefinitely because you'll never ever finish paying back the narcissist ever you guys enjoy the rest of your week and have a wonderful day and as always I grant you the permission to exist bye bye